Mohan Prabhu has actually asked the question. I think you can take this, Suraj. So, what is an artifact, right? So, because we talk about this a lot, you know. So, we have a pipeline, of course. It's the mentality. It's the thought process. And then you have your source code. You have your source code somewhere, right? So now, how do you convert the source code into an artifact? So, what's your thought process behind it, Suraj? Uh, like uh, to to be honest, like in an image way, you are saying, like images or charts. let's put it in this way that you know you have um, an artifact like for a java application it's a jar mm-hmm. but then you also anyways create a docker image if you are going into the docker world so if you could probably you know explain as to what artifacts are in general and what are the different types of artifacts we have out there to be good yeah. yeah so it's like more about the converting from uh, one extension to other extension or depends upon your use case uh like if i am writing something i'll what i will do i'll i'll dockerize it basically uh like in a multi layer way so that whenever the i'm i'm writing uh you can say artifact or deploying it it should run uh, you can say as a container as a image on the machine so it's pretty much hard actually <laughs> uh to, okay. for the artifact part to thinking but uh, i i would love to get the answer from you how 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 a dev, a devops guy will because we okay. we very less used to work on this artifact part to be honest because okay. we get all this stuff from devops only we use it okay. deploy it basically take it from that okay. okay very nice so let's say for example it's a java application right so this java applications source code is sitting in your git repository right and this java application probably you are using maven so let's put in a pom.xml over there which has your dependencies right so the okay. first thing that i would possibly do is if this is on my master branch my developers are let's say going to have feature branches and when they go ahead and commit a code to the feature branch and create a merge request to the master branch and during that merge request i am going to do a build and this build is pretty much just going to do some basic checks so it's going to do sast which is like running sonar cube or check marks or vera code and so on which would give me a good analysis of what is their code coverage Uh, do they have any bugs and vulnerabilities on their code whether they have reused a lot of code or you know their code lines in terms of all that right and at the same time i would also do something like software composition analysis where i would go ahead and scan the dependencies that they have mentioned in their pom.xml for any kind of vulnerabilities so you have black duck um, uh, yeah, i think it's vera code synopsis synopsis and even vera yeah, code synopsis. does that right yeah so yeah. i would do that during my pr or merge request kind of build and once they merge it to master right i am not going to run this again that there is no chance i'm going to run it because the reason why i run it on the merge request is for yearly feedback to my developers right so i don't want to do it again on my master branch so on the master branch the first thing that i would possibly do is build a jar out of that yeah. java code which means i have to run some maven commands or if i'm using gradle i have to do some gradle commands in terms of gradle building command. my jar right so after i build the jar that is my first artifact over here now i have to think about versioning for that particular jar so i have to yeah. do proper versioning probably you do calendar versioning like 2021.0 something yeah, yeah, or yeah. you or yeah. you go ahead and do semantic versioning where you do like major minor patch right so once i do some kind of versioning i store this jar immediately into an artifact yeah. repository something like artifactory or nexus right or probably yeah, uh, just put it into s3 why not like i'm i'm yeah. a cloud guy so put it into s3 right So okay. after building the jar and pushing it somewhere, now I know that this jar is really secure because I have already done so many pull request kind of builds and so on, which gives really good security. And the next thing I would possibly do is is in thinking to build a Docker image out of this. Uh, but then, provided we are going into the Docker world, right? So yeah. in terms yeah. of building a Docker image, what I would possibly do is first of all use a base image which has zero vulnerabilities, less. probably or yeah. very very less vulnerabilities, uh, or the best thing is i would use google's distroless images uh, in terms of specific non root images because nothing can run as root in that image root use. yeah nor nor can you know uh, nor can it have any kind of shell in terms of exec it and so on right so i would use google's distroless image for java right and then i would go ahead and plug in my jar and then i would build a docker image out of it and then i would immediately scan it before pushing you got to scan it so i can bring in something like aqua i can bring in trivi i can bring in anchor engine i can bring in claros i can bring in uh, any other cloud based scanning based. On, which is scan on push and so on right 
So I have so many different scanning mechanisms. I do that. Then I find out a report. I send that report back to my developers or to my system administrators in terms of patching the base image and whatnot, right? Uh, yeah. In terms of uh, later libraries or just doing an app to get update and then it would update all <laughs> libraries, right? So after that, what I would do is I would push it into an artifactory again. And this time again, I would version it accordingly, right? So in this way, we have two artifacts when we are going into the Docker or Kubernetes world. Uh, but then this is what artifacts are all about. So you take your code, build an artifact out of it, and then go ahead and store it somewhere so that in at one point of time, you can take it from there, do a rollback if you want to, or just do a new deployment if you want to. You know? So that's in regards to the continuous integration part of it. So CI stage oh, is all so, about building an artifact. Yeah. So it was more about the DevOps perspective, actually. <laughs> you, you got your Absolutely. answer. So it, 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 it that's what the DevOps guy used to do. If I get to, uh, I got this uh, artifacts part, I will de definitely like do just doc, create the Docker container and do some multi-stage and create the artifact uh, used to uh, like, I, I'll not do some uh, scan actually. I haven't yeah. uh, like, sorry, used to not do the scanning part basically. They are well aware, DevOps guy, uh, guys are well aware of that. Like what needs to be done before uh, going to production, basically the build uh, uh, going to production to deploy to the production. So it was like more of a DevOps perspective, the artifacts part. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So